Hello and welcome to a new type of video on the channel, Football Manager Experiments. We are starting off with In the Hot Seat, where different managers are given the job of taking Boss United forward. We begin with the control test, current BUSC manager Craig Elliott. The game has been simulated for 10 years, so let's see what's going on in June 2029. Here we go then, let's take a look. Well, first thing to notice, Boston are in the Vanarama National. Looking at the graph, they've done alright. Having won the National League North 27-28, but looking at the last 10 years, there's been, yeah, some, some National League North wins. Not lasting too long in there, but currently nine, finishing 19th in the National League. Let's take a look at the table. Finished 19th, just above the relegation zone. Four points clear, not too bad. Looking down the squad, is there anybody who is famous, who is well known? Doesn't look like it to me. Just looking at the ages. There's Oliver Turton who's 36. Where does he start? He's a Blackpool player in real life. Is there anybody else who stands out? But I guess what we need to look at is who the manager is. And it's Edu Rubio. Who's this? A guy who doesn't want to be a manager. He wants to be a coach. had two jobs. Having been at Yeovil in 2024 to 26, took over at Boston in October 28, so that's earlier on this season, and finished 19th. So he kept kept the club up. Let's have a look at the the managers of Boston. So if we hide the caretakers out of the way. So if we start with Craig Elliott who joined in 20, back in 2017. So he left in 22. After five, just over five years in the job. New Year's Eve he got sacked. Was replaced by Itor Sands who lasted almost two years but did manage to win the league as did Craig Elliott. And he won a cup. Oh, he actually won the FA Trophy as well. Sands managed to win the National North, having been relegated the previous season, but he got the club straight back up. Scott Feezy, another almost two years, but no milestones. John Terry taking over at Boston for 116 days. So he lasted from September through to mid-January. That's not a long time. And then replaced by Eduardo. Now which Eduardo is this? This is a former Chelsea player called Eduardo. And then he was replaced by Edu Rubio. So they've not had any managers poached. They've all been sacked. But Eduardo did win the league having finished bottom of the National League the year before, he then won the National League North. So if we do go through the competitions in terms of domestic leagues, so if we look at the first season, which is 2019-20, so ended up finishing fifth, then a fourth, then a first, so steady progress. 92 points in that season. This was still under Elliot. Then came straight back down from the conference. Finishing 22nd. Won the league again. Stayed up in the National League. Finished 4th in the National League. Obviously didn't win the playoffs. We we'll might be able to have a look and see what happened there. And then finished rock bottom with 37 points from the 46 games. But then... Winning Vanarama North 
in 27-28 and staying up in the National League. So if we just check, so that year was 25-26. If we check what happened that year in terms of the league table, so finishing fourth in the playoffs with Morecambe, Stevenage, Stockport, York and Swindon. Yep. But Stevenage ended up getting promoted. Let's have a look at the the playoffs. So it was Stevenage beating Morecambe. If we go through to the semi-finals where we lost on penalties away at Stevenage after a two-all draw. But all in all, BFC have basically become a little bit of a yo-yo club between National League North and the National League Premier. Having won the league what three times in this ten years, it takes some doing to win the same division three times in ten years, considering you then have to get relegated back down to win it. Let's go back to Craig Elliott. Unfortunately, we can't click on him, so we don't actually know whether he took on any more jobs. Which suggests to me, considering he left in 22, that's seven, almost seven years ago, he possibly didn't get another job. However, let's go look at some other leagues. Let's look at the Premier League. So, current season, Liverpool winning it on goal difference from Man City. Looks like, looking at current form, that City threw it away. As did Manchester United, two points behind, but having drawn three of their last five games. That's a bit of a tight one, especially with Chelsea winning their last five games, but then being on 84 points behind the league winners on 88. However, let's look at some past winners. So it does seem to be dominated by the Northwest, with City winning it this year. Liverpool coming back with two titles, which would have levelled it up with Manchester United on 20 top division titles each. But then United hitting back with the next three. City getting another one. United again. But then Liverpool have won the last two. And the last two seasons have been carbon copies of each other. Liverpool, Man City, Man United. Looking at clubs that have broken the top three. So you've got Everton in the first season, but then they're nowhere to be seen. Chelsea as well, coming in second place in 23-24 and 25-26. But that's about it, really. Let's pick up in terms of the profile of some players. So Arsenal currently don't have a manager. If we go down the club, so you've got Aston Villa, Roberto De Zerbi, Christian Stellini at Blackburn. That's Blackburn in the Premier League. Okay, they finished 20th, but that's a little bit of a shock. Gerardo Martino, the Argentinian in charge of Bournemouth, but it looks like he's brought them down. Adam Lallana, current manager of mid-table Premier League side Brighton and Hove Albion. Frank Lampard, still at Chelsea. Andreas Christensen, captain of Chelsea. Both of those have spent all 10 years in the game at the club, we assume. Let's have a look. Have a look at Lampard's milestones. And yeah, still there. Crystal Palace, managed by Paolo Fonseca. Everton, managed by the Spanish... Hulan Lopetegui. Leeds are managed by Yannick Balassi. First Congolese manager in the Premier League. Sergei Semak, the Russian, at the helm of Leicester. Liverpool are managed by Thomas Tuchel. The guy who took over from Klopp at Dortmund. But let's just take a look. So no, so Klopp got sacked in 2025, 
replaced by Luis Enrique. Steven Gerrard took over interim manager. And then Thomas Tuchel took over in 2027. Jorge Jesus, manager of Man City. No manager currently at Manchester United. Basically because Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was sacked in 2020. T replaced by Carlo Ancelotti, which will be just after Everton's top three finish. So his stock was obviously quite high and has moved into the United role and has only just left. Newcastle managed by Sean Dyche, who's keeping his career going in the Premier League. He was England manager. Sean Dyche took over in July 2020 as England manager, leaving Burnley to do so. Lasted six years as England manager before presumably, oh yeah, resigning and then taking over at Aston Villa and has since moved on to Newcastle. Sergio Conceição, manager of Southampton. Stoke, back in the Premier League, and Ruben Amorim, Portuguese manager. Zinedine Zidane is currently the manager of Tottenham Hotspur, and their captain is still Harry Kane. Antonio Mohamed, Argentinian guy at the helm of Watford. And West Ham are managed by Lionel Scaloni. Wolves just relegated from the Premier League, but they're managed by David Nielsen. Let's just go down through the through the divisions. So if we just take a look at the league table of the championship, let's see if anybody stands out from there. So Burnley are on their way back up with 99 points. Birmingham and Derby going up with them. Is there anybody who's come right up? So Crew are currently in the championship. As well as Rotherham. Ipswich back in the championship. As we go down to League One. Nottingham Forest unsuccessful in a promotion bid back out of League One. Currently in the same division as Notts County who have jumped up a couple of leagues. In League 2, so Wigan dropped all the way back down to League 2, but have just won promotion back to League 1. Alongside Fleetwood, Plymouth and Coventry. So Fylde are in the Football League. Lincoln down in League 2. Bolton in League 2. Tranmere and Wickham losing their league status. Two former non-league clubs themselves. So we go back to the National League. York back as a football league club next season. So Accrington have dropped down into the to the non-league. As we go down and find any of us a re relegation for Leamington, Hartlepool are now back in the regional divisions. Wealdstone in the top flight of non-league football. In National League North, so Hereford are back into what was the conference. Barrow being promoted. Curzon Ashton still a National League North club. Macclesfield down in National League North. Barwell have come up, as have Whitby, Baseford, Colville, South Shields. But those four are currently going back down again. So we go down south, so Swindon, National League South Champions, 2029. You heard it here first, 113 points, just the three losses out of 46 games. And then the seventh place, Welling, have gone up with them through the playoffs. That means Welling have won three away games in a row in the playoffs. Any other massive clubs down in National League South, you've got Aldershot down there. 
Dagenham of Redbridge and Torquay. Definitely some interesting stuff happened. Right, let's have a look at the FA Cup. Not that I can spell FA Cup. Wow. Liverpool, current champions of the FA Cup, having beaten Everton in the final. So let's check out the past winners. So City won the domestic double in the first season. Arsenal have won it again. Everton, this would have been without Ancelotti. Then Leicester. Liverpool and then four wins in a row for Manchester United against City, Liverpool, Leeds and Spurs in the final. They've beat off some rivals to get those four. Let's have a quick look at the Carabao Cup. Still the big clubs winning it. Arsenal, Liverpool, Chelsea, Spurs, City and United. As we go into Europe, extra time victory for Manchester City in the most recent one. As we go past winners, so that first season was won by Barcelona, but then it's been fairly dominated by English clubs by the look of it, with Chelsea, City, Liverpool, Chelsea, then Barcelona stopping the trend, but then City come back with another couple, then PSG, and then City again. So City have actually won the Champions League four times in the last ten years. And look at Manchester United, they've got to the final three times without winning it again. Let's have a look and see how England have been getting on. So if we go back to the managers, we know about Sean Dyche, so Gareth Southgate did resign in 2020, which presumably was after Euro 2020, which in the game does happen. We'll check on some results shortly. So Sean Dyche then took over, and the current manager is Roberto Mancini. We've gone back to an Italian. He's been in for almost three years. So if we go back down, we'll go check some results. So in the European Championships in 2020, the group including Turkey, Norway and Poland won one out of those three games, but then got absolutely demolished by Germany in the Aviva Stadium in the island. World Cup 2022. The one that happens in November 2022, because it's in Qatar. Beating Denmark, Mali and the USA in the group stages, but then losing out to the Dutch in the first knockout round. European Championships of 2024. Looks like they're being held in Germany. So lost out to Holland in the group, but then beat Turkey and Austria getting through against Denmark in the first knockout round, beating Croatia in a quarter-final, but then losing out in the semis to Spain. Callum Hudson-Odoi getting the England goal. Skip forward to 2026. Looks like we've got an expanded World Cup in groups of three, so having demolished Japan and Mali in the group stages through to a second round against Peru. Again, demolishing those, but then losing out to Portugal in the third round. Harvey Barnes with a very late equaliser, taking it to extra time. But at the Lincoln Financial Field in the United States, Portugal came through. Skip forward to 2028, European Championships beat Ireland in Italy and Wales, <laughs> but then losing to Spain, but advancing through to play Norway in the second round. Manchester United duo of Greenwood and Rashford scoring the goals, beating Serbia in the quarter-finals, Phil Foden getting one of them, and Greenwood again. Ireland in the semi-final, Marcus Rashford penalty, and then in the final, England lifted the European Championships 
beating Switzerland by three goals to nil. Harry Kane scoring in the very first minute. And that's where we leave England. Reigning European champions. What we can have a quick look at is so the current England squad, see if there's anybody, if it's full of young players of the current time. So yeah, you've got Dean Henderson in the squad, the age of 32, Aaron Wambasaka, Axel Twanzebe, Trent Alexander-Arnold, Ben Godfrey, current Norwich player, Tamori from Chelsea, Gomez at Liverpool, Chilwell still playing, Jude Bellingham at the age of 25, still Probably not even hit his prime yet. Marcus Rashford at the age of 31 playing on the left wing. Mason Mount playing in the middle. Jaden Sancho, Phil Foden, Callum Hudson-Odoi, Eddie Nketiah, Mason Greenwood. There's a lot of players in the England squad that are on the game from the very start. Has this golden generation, dare we call it, come up trumps with the champion European Championships win of 2028. Well, we're going to leave it there. And the next one is going to be a new manager at the helm of Boston United. A big name. I'll leave you to speculate on who that's going to be. But thank you very much for watching. And I'll catch you later.